I thank you that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the Yatsa mantle. I thank you that somebody, somebody's life is going to change tonight. I thank you. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I thank you that the trajectory of someone's life, the trajectory of someone's life, will change tonight by the Yatsa anointing. And for that we say amen. amen. Let's take our seats in the presence of the Lord. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tonight I've only come for one thing. I'm on a mission and the Spirit of God has spoken to me and said, Andre, you are in this service to change the trajectory of people. So there's somebody that I am here for. I don't know if I'm here for everybody, but I know that I'm here for somebody. I said, I came with an anointing for somebody to change the trajectory. Now, what do I mean by trajectory? Trajectory is a word that's used for motion. When you throw a stone, the stone has a particular what? Trajectory. Hallelujah. Now, if, if, if the stone is stopped and then thrown in another direction, that means the stone has changed its what? Trajectory. Wherefore, the trajectory of a stone to change, something would have had to happen. Some great force would have had to do what? Stop the stone in motion and change its motion. Now, somebody has been on a downward trajectory. Someone has been on a trajectory towards failure. Someone has been on a trajectory where they're just like a man in the gym, hallelujah, on the treadmill, going through the treadmill of life, uh, jogging, sweating, but going nowhere. Are you with me? I said jogging, sweating, but going nowhere. There are different kinds of treadmills. Uh, Hallelujah. Some of you know them. In fact, some of you can write a book about it. There is what's called the financial treadmill. It means you work and work and work, and at the end of the month, you go where? Nowhere. You wonder why and what in the world is happening. Then there's another one called what? The romantic treadmill. That means you go out with Jim, you go out with Johnny, you go out with... Uh, James, and you go out with all of them, hallelujah, and at the end of the day, you're still where? Nowhere. Uh, but you have had motion. Are you with me? Yeah. You have had motion, but I came to change someone's trajectory. I said, I came to change the trajectory of somebody's life. Hallelujah. We're going to go through some scriptures here. Hallelujah. Because there are laws that govern, that govern the flow of the power of God. So we start there and then we'll reconnect with what I preached on Sunday. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Who got blessed with Sunday? I mean, who's praising God at home? I mean, who's, who's getting some dreams? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Who is the Lord speaking to? Hallelujah. Who is, who is hearing from God uh, extra special this week? Hallelujah. Well, Joshua chapter 5. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 5. Let's turn to Joshua chapter 5. You got your Bibles turned there. Joshua chapter 5. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, While the Israelites camped at Gilgal, they observed the Sabbath on the evening of the fourth day. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. My God. Oh, let's move up. I want us to move up. Move up, move up, move up, move up, move up. Hallelujah. Okay. Glory be to God. Let's read from verse 5. From verse 5. He says, all the males who came out were circumcised, but all the males who were born in the wilderness on the way as they left Egypt, they had not been circumcised. For the Israelites worked 40 years in the wilderness, 
until all the nation that is the man of war who came out of Egypt died because they did not listen to the voice of the Lord to them that the Lord had sworn an oath that he would not let them see the land which he had promised to their fathers to give us a land of abundance flowing with milk and honey so it was their uncircumcised son who he raised up in their place mm -mm -mm. Somebody say, don't let no one be raised up in my place. Oh, uh, yeah. Ooh. Whom Joshua circumcised, because circumcision had not been performed on the way. Hallelujah. Now let's focus. Then when they had finished circumcising all the males of the nation, they stayed in their places until they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day, somebody said this day, I have rolled away the reproach, the derision, the ridicule of Egypt from you. Hallelujah. I saw in the realm of the spirit uh, that today uh, God wanted to yatsa somebody from the reproach of yesterday. You see, they had been defeated uh, in the wilderness. They had been defeated. Uh, oh, and they had been cut off uh, from the plans and purposes of God. And there was a reproach on them. There was a disgrace on them. You see, something happens uh, when you fail in broad daylight well they had failed in broad daylight so the reproach of the failure was upon them because failure creates a reproach are you hearing what I'm saying I said failure creates a reproach there is private failure and there is public failure but failure there is a reproach that it creates there is an atmosphere that it creates around you even if people don't know that you failed you yourself and I me myself Myself and I know that we failed and there is a reproach that is around you the word reproach means a disgrace it means a setback it means a, it means an injury and you and it creates an atmosphere around you how you could dress good you could look cute but there's a what there's a reproach around you so the Bible says he says on that day God said I have rolled away I have I've rolled away the reproach. I've rolled away the reproach from you. Well, somebody came to this service with reproach over the failure of yesterday. Somebody came to this service with the reproach of failure 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 but I have come with the anointing of God I have come with the power of God to reverse that reproach in the name of Jesus I said to reverse that reproach in the name of Jesus now how do you access how do you access the anointing to reverse the reproach of yesterday how do you in fact this reproach was so great it wasn't even their reproach they had inherited their reproach it was the reproach of the parents so reproach can be passed from generation to generation this was a genetic reproach it was in them that the Lord said you will not go into the promised land it was not them who turned their backs because of unbelief it was their parents but they were born into the reproach of their parents and they had inherited the reproach so you can have reproach that is produced by yourself or you can have reproach that you were born into you born into an atmosphere of reproach but I have come to tell you that there is an anointing in which God says I would roll away I would roll it back I would roll it back now why did he say I would roll it back because reproach that's a very interesting word because he says I would roll it back why did he not say I will cut it off he said no why did he say I will smash it up why did he not say I would remove it no he said I would roll it back that's to tell you that reproach is a carpet that many people walk on you see 
see when reproach is on you, reproach is something that you walk on. It's like a red carpet. But this is not a carpet to exalt you. This is a carpet to bring you down. So there is a carpet of reproach. That's why you can buy, you can buy a ticket and go to Germany. But when you go to Germany, you come off the plane, there's a carpet of reproach waiting for you. Then you leave Germany, then you go to Spain. Then you head to Spain, then there's what? A carpet of reproach waiting for you. So I have come to tell somebody, hallelujah, that the carpet of reproach is something that God Almighty can remove from somebody. And when he removes it, he's going to do what? He's going to roll it back. Somebody say roll it back. Oh my God. Oh, somebody said, roll it back. So there's a rolling back. You see, let me tell you, sometimes we think if I can change partners, if I can change jobs, if I can change countries, if I can change cars, if I can change friends, then I can change my story. Well, if reproach is there, all you do is have a different partner on the carpet of reproach. Are you hearing me? I said, are you hearing me? You can have money in your account and still have reproach. Because reproach affects your speed. Reproach affects your spirit. When there's reproach, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't like what you see. You could be dressed nice, look good, with Miss Universe. But when you look at yourself, when you look at yourself, you're not seeing your physical, you're seeing your spiritual. Because there's what? An atmosphere of what? Reproach. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, hallelujah. But somebody's going to be changed today. I said, I came today to change the trajectory of somebody's life. Oh, that's why I'm here today. I'm here for one reason. I'm here for one reason. In the name of Jesus, that the reproach of someone, hallelujah, shall be rolled away. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, how? How does reproach get rolled away what releases the power because the bible says this day now you got to understand that on the day that the river jordan opened the reproach was in rolled away on the day that manna came down from heaven the reproach was not rolled away on the day god god sent the two spies into the land the reproach was not rolled away now the opening of the jordan was an act of god the opening of the Jordan was an act of God so you can walk in a miracle but yet the reproach is still there are you hearing what I'm saying you can walk in the power of God yet the reproach is still there you can walk in the anointing let the reproach is still there you can see a miracle let the reproach is still there I've come to tell somebody that today your reproach shall vanish oh my God oh he said, this day, this day, what was it about this day? Because something happened to trigger. You see, you've got to understand that there are different triggers for different manifestations. You see, there are different triggers. You see, there's a different, there are different products that come from heaven above. Today, it's a reproach destroying anointing. It's different. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Reproach is what psychologists don't have a word for. It's when somebody, everything is well in their life, but they feel dirty. I to Sanka Nasa. They feel something's wrong. They feel off. But everything about them 
Anybody looking at them says, what's wrong with your head? Because it's called what? Reproach. Jesus. Rapati shakata. Mm. Reproach means you lost. The reproach is created because you lost a major battle was lost in the realm of the spirit and you are defeated and the stigma of the defeat is on you spiritually Jesus. hallelujah that's why you can be born into a house that they lost a battle and the stigma of the defeat is there because it is what? Spiritual. It is what? Spiritual. Because you were defeated. And the demons won. <laughs> I said what? And the demons what? Won. And because they won, they're like, whatever. Go to Germany, get a car, whatever. Get a new job, whatever. Get a new dress, whatever. We defeated you. We defeated your parents. We defeated the destiny of this family. You are defeated. La Mande Shikeda. Lebra basaka. Hallelujah. So the laws of Yatsa, when applied to reproach, it means, hallelujah, the first thing that needs to happen is this. Oh, let's go back to the book of Joshua, chapter 5. Mm -mm -mm. Reading from verse 1. Oh, glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. Somebody shout Yatsa. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 1 says, Now it happened when all the kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea when they heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan before the Israelites until they crossed over that their hearts melted in despair and there was no fighting spirit in them any longer because of what the Lord had done for them. You see, what you've got to understand is that these kings, they represent the demonic kingdom. It says, when the demonic heard that the Lord had caused the children to win where their mothers were defeated, that the Lord had caused the children to win a battle that daddy lost. Oh, when the Lord had caused the children or caused the individual to win in a place of defeat. You see, when they heard that they had won in a place of defeat, in the realm of the demonic, the fighting spirit, the fighting spirit in the demonic was lost. So when you win defining battles, demons lose courage. Oh, hallelujah. You see, now, the reason, now, when you don't win those battles, the demons have courage. They're like, <laughs> you see, because what happened? You see, their fathers, their mothers had been told to partner with God so they could cross the Jordan and step into Canaan. But they felt that they were grasshoppers and they could not yield to God for God to do the impossible through them. So where mama was defeated, the children were not defeated. And when they, and when they overcame that family fight, because there was a family defeat there was a what family defeat so there are places that families naturally get whipped all the time <laughs> Jesus <laughs> oh can I prophesy like I feel it 
Oh, there are places where families get whipped. There are places where you get whipped all the time. You get what? Whipped all the time. And so in that place, in that place, in spite of the wonderful things God's doing, in that place, there's what? Reproach. Because in that battle, you surrendered to the demonic. And they got something over you. And when they have something over you, your spirit man knows it. Oh, I said, you what? Your spirit man knows it. Your spirit man knows it. But somebody's spirit is going to rise up today. In the place of defeat, you're going to rise up like a champion. In the place where you surrendered, you're going to rise up. What mama lost, daughter is going to get. What papa lost, son is going to get. What defeated your sister, you are going to conquer it. Oh, I came to prophesy to you that the spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you for this is your season to win. I said, this is your season to win. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mando The demonic works in patterns. Patterns. Patterns, patterns, patterns. So there are patterns that are seen in the families of the sons and daughters of men. And you can see these patterns. And these patterns are controlled by the demonic. But there are men and women who are what? Pattern breakers. I said they are what? Pattern breakers. Somebody said the pattern shall be reversed with me. The shall be reversed with me. Oh Lord, I said the pattern shall be reversed with me. Somebody said the pattern shall be reversed with me. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why. You've got to understand that you've got to do your own thinking for yourself. Yeah, yeah. If you don't do your own thinking for yourself, you could follow your family to defeat. My God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. I said, if you don't do your own thinking for yourself, you could follow your family into what? defeat. Ask Jonathan. When we meet Jonathan in heaven, he would say, if your papa is wrong, don't follow him. If your mama is wrong, don't follow her. He said, I followed my papa to fight a battle for which God had not sent him. And in the battle, I got killed. When my destiny was supposed to be number two to David, I forfeited my destiny behind my papa because where he got defeated is where I got defeated too. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Lombre ganasia. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes... You got to win where they lost. <laughs> oh, can I preach this? I said sometimes you got to win. So if you if you, if you've got to win where they lost, you cannot have their mentality. If you have their mentality, you get the results. <laughs> I said what? If you have their mentality, because their mentality is a losing mentality. And the losing mentality, you would recreate the loss. Jesus. But I've come to prophesy to a people who are going to rise up and win. Yes. You see, one thing about a winner, they are committed to whatever is required for them to win. Oh, Lord. I said, if they're going to win crawling, they'll crawl. If they're going to win swimming on their back, they'll swim on their back. If they've got, I mean, whatever it takes for them to win, they are going to do it so they can what? Win. Yeah. Woo. Do I have some winners in this place? Yeah. 
So you have inherited family reproach, and then you have personal reproach. It's shock and time. Personal reproach is caused by you. It's Sarabaya. Personal reproach is caused by you. Personal, I mean, how do you live with personal reproach? Ask David. No, in fact, no David, ask Bathsheba. Because when the Bible talks about Bathsheba, it says this is Bathsheba, who was formerly of Uriah, who David got killed. <laughs> oh my God. I sakar na man That is, that is, that is, that is reproach. <laughs> That's called what? Personal reproach. Iyatatanat. Then there's inherited reproach. But I've come to tell somebody, whether it's personal, whether it's inherited, whether it's inherited plus personal. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Because some people have inherited, some people have personal, some people added inherited to some personal. And they have multiplied reproach. So whether you created, you made sure you added to what mama had. I mean, you made sure you got defeated in places that mama in herself didn't get defeated. I tell you, you made sure the devil gave you a whipping where he didn't give any of your family a whipping. Whether that is the case, I have come with an anointing to, for the reproach to be what? Rolled away. Somebody say rolled away. Rolled away. Now, so the first thing that needs to happen is that you need, you need to fight a battle that they lost. You need to go back to the place of defeat. So what happens in the realm of the spirit, in order for you to be free from reproach, the same battle, the same battle would be released to you from the spirit realm. Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah. The same battle, the same battle, if you lost the battle, the same battle will be released to you. If it is a materialistic battle, it will come back. If it's a sexual battle, it will come back. If it's an anger battle, it will come back. If it's an addiction battle, it will come back. Whatever area of life it is, it, it will come back in the, in, in the different form but same battle because you have to receive the test. So the first law is the law of re-examination. Mm -mm -mm. Or what they call in college reference exam. That means you fail the exam, then you study when other people are on holiday, and you go to sit it again. Somebody say reference exam. That is the law. That means you got to sit a what? Reference exam. So if mama lost, you have to, you have to deal with the same demon mama dealt with and defeat it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, but I'm going to pass my reference. For this is my winning season. Somebody say, this is my winning season. This is my winning season. You see, you've got to understand the way the spirit realm operates. The way the spirit realm operates. There is the realm of re-examination. It's the realm of re-examination. So the children of Israel, God Almighty did not say that you will not have to go through Jordan. It says the same place where your parents got defeated is the same place that you will have to overcome. Same place. Same place. Somebody say same place. Same place. Hallelujah. Same battle that you lost, same place you got defeated, is the same thing you got to face in a different form, in a different continent, with a different person, but it's the same test.
Ghana Masika. Turn to your neighbor, say, This time I'm going to pass it. She cut up us. Oh, Jesus. Nana Nasa. Isa Katata. You see, to defeat reproach, you have to face the demon that defeated you in March number two. Jesus. Hey. You know, I'm, I'm a boxer. I train with the Sierra Leone Olympic team. I like boxing. And I've watched the boxing trilogies. Ali versus Foreman. Hi. Ay, 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 ay. These are the boxing trilogies. I watch both fights. Evander Holyfield versus Mike Tyson. If I think of Evander Holyfield because when I was in Jamaica, I was sitting in the hotel and I looked, Evander was just by there. So Evander Holyfield was in the same hotel as I. And, and, and I said, that's Evander Holyfield. Hallelujah. He was there to promote some boxing match in the nation of Jamaica. And I, and I thought and I reminisced about the fight. Because it was a fight, Mark Tyson lost the fight, and Mark Tyson said, I want to fight you again. And he did what? Lose again. So sometimes you can order the fight, and you do what? Lose again. Now, in the realm of the spirit, if you got to fight it ten times, you got to fight it ten times. Because except you win it, you ain't crossing over. Now let me show you something. You say, what is the benefit? Some say, what is the benefit? It says, now, cut up. Hallelujah. Let's go further down. Oh, okay, read it from verse 10. It says, while the Israelites camped at Gilgal, they observed the Passover on the morning of the 14th day of the month on the desert plains of Jericho. On the day after Passover, on that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread, and the manna ceased on that day after they had eaten some of the produce of the land so that the Israelites no longer had manna but they ate some of the produce of the land of Canaan during that year you see there's a level of blessing there's a level of anointing there's a level of intervention it's called the manna level some to say it's called the manna level the manna level is an act of God. The manna, so there is manna anointing. There is manna provision. There is manna intervention. There is manna intimacy with God. Well, the manna level is when God gives you just enough. The manna level is not a level where you can walk in overflow. The manna level is the level where God just keeps you and God just preserves you. God preserves you. He doesn't let the enemy finish you. But let me tell you there's a level that's higher than manna because when they went into the land of Canaan the Bible says that the manna ceased now you need to understand something about the manna because the manna was the longest miracle in the history of the world because the Bible says for 40 years that every single day from Monday to Saturday oh no from Monday to Friday that what happened that from the heavens, uh, angel food dropped down and they would go and take the angel food and eat. Uh, that happened every day. But here's the thing about the manna. The manna would not last until another day. It was a miracle just for that day. It was an anointing just for that day. It was a word just for that day. It's to get you to the other day. And when the other day comes, God will release something 
something and they get to another day. But the Bible tells them that if you would go where your parents were defeated, if you would go where you were defeated, you would go into a land where I would flow with manna. It's be a land of milk and honey. It's a land of abundance. It's an abundant flow where you have more than enough anointing, where you have more than enough money, where you have more than enough relationship, where you have more than enough. It's an overflow. So some of you are the manna because you always stay at manna when you are walking with God and there is reproach on you. Except you win the battle, the manna will continue. But I've come to prophesy to somebody that the anointing of God is here to change the trajectory of your life. You have been walking around that mountain. Oh, there's a people who they just walk around the mountain receiving manna from year to year to year to year. Yes, they rejoice. The Lord spoke to them. But it's time to change your level. Because if you don't change your level, you will stay on the manna level. But come to prophesy to somebody that it's time for you to move from the manna level. It's time for you to step into the Canaan level. The level of milk and honey. Of houses that you did not build. Of vineyards that you did not plant. Of abundance. I came to prophesy that the Lord God Almighty is about to do something in your life. That if you will go and win the battle. If you will say, God anoint me to win this battle. If you say, I will go into the Jordan. If you say, I'll be strong and very courageous. I want that battle. I'm going to be like Caleb. Give me that mountain. Hallelujah. Winners have a prize. It's why Jesus said, he that overcometh, or another way, he that wins. <laughs> he that overcometh shall inherit this. He that overcometh shall inherit this. That is, he that what? Wins. Ay, ay, ay. If you don't win, you stay on manna. Yakatapasai. If you don't win, you stay where? Manna. We thank God for manna. We thank God for manna. But I, you get tired of manna. I said, you get what? Tired of manna. I've been eating the same food every day for 40 years. My God. Shandam Mose. Same scenery. Mana means same scenery. Mana level, God is moving, but it's the same scenery. Same level. Same scenery. Same happenings. Canaan, new territory all the time. Oh, oh, oh. you see Canaan? is we take Jericho. Canaan, we take I. Canaan, we take Bethel. Canaan, we're taking new territory. So with Canaan, you're going from glory to glory. But with Mana, oh my God. Same scenery. Same scenery. Same thing. Same thing. Now the mistake people make, they say, let me go have Bishop pray for me. Let me go have Shepherd Bushiri pray for me. Let me go Hallelujah. Have David Oedepo pray for me so I can step into Canaan. No. You step into Canaan not by laying out of hands, but by winning. Yes. <laughs> you got to win something. <laughs> Don't you never say, I got to win something. I got to win something. I'm winning something. Jesus. Woo! Oh, another way of putting it. You get to Canaan by beating something. Caesar. You get to Canaan by what? Beating something. You got to beat something. You got to defeat something. You got to annihilate something. 
You've got to overcome something. Hey, yeah, yeah. If you don't overcome it, if you don't defeat it, you ain't stepping there. Ooh. Oh, glory. I see two words in the spirit. The Lord says, my people, my people are caught up in the cycle of manor celebrations. When I've got Canaan celebrations for them. Because Canaan celebrations is fresh territory. Oh, Canaan celebration is new territory. My God. Rata basa rabasa. Oh, when you step into the Canaan level, all of a sudden, woo! You're just conquering new territory. Shakata. Hallelujah. Woo. Somebody say, I'm going to defeat something. Now here's the thing, the wonderful thing about this thing is that your reproach battle or mana battle is not 500 battles, it's only one. Because you have to defeat what Jesus called the strong man. The strong man is, if I, if, if I paraphrase it in today's vocabulary, I would say the strong man is the gang leader. What it means? That means he is the leader of the demonic gang that is harassing your life. So you have to defeat who? The gang leader or the strong man. Because the strong man is the leader that controls all the other demons. So the battle is not with the other demons, it's with the gang leader. So it's only one battle. It says, how can you, how can you go into a strong man's house without first what? Binding the strong man. Because once you bind the strong man, you watch it in movies, they kill the strong man, everybody's like, gone. It's like, boy, I'm next. So, God. Because it's what? Strong man. So, in your life, there is a strong man. Jesus. Woo. In your life, there is a gang leader. A katabasaka. I say, in your life, there's a what? There's a gang leader. So, it is the gang leader. Don't, don't, don't begin. Oh, Bishop, if you know my problems, let me begin. In fact, there are not enough fingers and toes to tell you how many problems I have. Let me begin. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and I still have more. In reality, you really only have one master problem. If you defeat the problem, all the rest evaporates. Because all the rest are a byproduct. They're what? A byproduct. That is why in medicine, they have what they call a secondary infection or a secondary fracture. Or a secondary pain. That is, I have to think. And when I have to think, it is affecting the way I sleep. So I wake up with neck pain. Is my problem neck pain? What's my problem? My problem is what? To think. Oh, I have to think, 
and at night I didn't sleep. I had what? Insomnia. Is my problem insomnia? But insomnia is what? It's a secondary effect. But we, we say, oh Lord, then we focus on what? The secondary effect. When we need to deal with the gang leader. Somebody say, I'm going to deal with the gang leader. You see, today you got delivered. You thought you had many problems. Now you realize it's only one. Jesus. People who don't know this, they say, this thing is too much for me. It's too much. It's too much. How can one person have so many things, Mom? Hey. No. It's only one. If you take care of it, everything is what? Shh. Because when you take care of it, all the other demons are afraid of you. Whenever you deal with a strong man, all the other demons, they're like, Woo! Oh! Go be careful, boy. Whoa! Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody is going to walk in this realm of power. I say, somebody's going to walk in this realm of power. This realm of power doesn't come by Bishop laying hands on you. This realm of power comes by winning a battle. There is an anointing that comes on you by impartation. But there is an anointing that comes on you by winning. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) <laughs> when you win geez, it's an anointing that comes on you because all of a sudden you have what? authority <laughs> you walk in man it's like I defeated this something happens to your spirit yes. your spirit goes oh. so I nail this thing nail it Oh, hallelujah. That's number one. Number two. So, number one is what? The law of what? Re-examination. That means I have to do what? Receive the test and pass it. And the next law is the law. Hey, yeah, yeah. That is a serious one. Turn to never say this is a serious one. Verse 2. It says, At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make for yourself fleet knives and circumcise the new generation of the sons of Israel as was done. And Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the sons of Israel at Gilberth Herasoloth. This is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. The Lord said, make flint knives or make knives of stone, sharp knives, and tell the grown men, drop your trousers. They say, Joshua, we've dropped it. He say, drop the boxers. He say, drop it. And then when they looked, Joshua has what? A knife. They say, put it on the table. Hey? They say, no anesthetic. They say, anesthetic. At that time, they had no anesthetic. No anesthetic. So they say, put it on the table. Hey. So they took it, put it on the table. Ha, ya, 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 ya. Now, can you imagine? Can you imagine? No, think of you seeing somebody be circumcised and he hasn't come to you yet. You're doing hey, talk about Michael Jackson moves. <laughs> what? He hasn't come to you yet. When you hear people going, ah! Whoa! Oh my God! 
And then he comes to you, a brutal stone knife, and says, bring it, cut it. So, there's a law called the law of brutal, radical sanctification. That is a sanctification that says, this thing, I am going to cut it off me, even if I faint while doing it. This attitude that my grandmother has, that has caused that trouble, Jesus, me, I shall cut it off me. This thing that my father has, this thing that's in the family, hey, yeah, yeah, me, Jesus, I, I, because you can understand, he did not circumcise the finger. He circumcised the male organ because he circumcised it because that is where it is hidden. And he circumcised the part of the body that deals with production. So he had to circumcise the excess flesh. So, for you, for the reproach to be removed, you have to circumcise yourself with a knife. It's what Paul said, mortify the deeds of your flesh. The word mortify comes from the word mortician. Mortuary. That means kill it, cut it, annihilate it. Don't pamper it. Don't say it's an issue. It's not an issue. Kill it. <laughs> I mean, bo- kill it brutal. Annihilate it. Because you see, you see, okay, this thing is what cost mama. You see this thing? <laughs> it's what cost papa. You see this thing? It's what cost me losing this battle twice. You see this thing? But believe you me, I'm going to cut it. You don't come to a bishop for prayer. Was there anybody praying? Was there any prayer? Was there any singing? This is brutal. Was there any anesthetic? This is brutal self mortification. And when they cut off the foreskin, God said, this day, because you've cut off the foreskin, I have rolled away the reproach. What is your foreskin that needs to be cut for you to produce on another level? Jesus. Jesus. What is your foreskin? You see, you need to understand. The things of the spirit, they're not cheap. The only thing that is free is salvation. Everything else, you have to pay for it. <laughs> the only thing that Jesus paid for you to go to heaven finish anything else boy you have to follow some laws yep. this is called the law of the flint knife the law of the stone knife I feel this in the spirit I feel this in the spirit. If you sanctify yourself, if you use the flint knife, the world will celebrate you. Move this. No one has just hit me. Another no one has just hit me. 
Libra, ce qui était. La catocoche grégété. A chaque catobré, ce vé que d'arabas rire. Les grégués chez Katai. Oh, hallelujah. Mande chez Vraba, go se garabai. Je Vraba, pa, pa, pa. Hallelujah. Many are stuck in manner celebrations. When they're Canaan levels. Somebody say what? Canaan levels. Somebody say what? Canaan levels to access. Canaan levels to step into. La grabo se verebe shika. La nambo robo shia. Hallelujah. I decree this. You shall see a strong man. La ba isa la katabosu. Isa katabosu. Life is not unbearable. Life is only terrible when you don't have knowledge. When you have knowledge, you know it is a master fight. I defeat it. Don't allow anybody to cause you to be defeated. We do, you see, we do things that God didn't tell us to do. God says, honor your mother and father. The word honor means to value somebody for what they bring. So, value your mother and father. He never told you to follow them. You only follow them if they follow in Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow what? Christ. <laughs> she cut her. He didn't say follow. He said honor. Is there a difference between honor and follow? He says honor Prime Minister from the Stuart. Okay, did he say follow him? So he goes to so he goes to the bedroom and follow him. He goes to he says, oh, he say, oh, Prime Minister, I'm honoring you. He said, but, but, but why are you following me to the bedroom? He said, because I'm honoring you. He said, well, but honor is different from what? Follow. Honor is different from what? Follow. Because if you follow, you could follow. Jonathan followed Saul to his death. Am I saying the truth? The same results that they have, you will have if you follow them. If you follow them. So, so now, if they are Christ-like, my God follow them. Because the Bible says, follow, follow what? Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Somebody say I'm a winner. It's a winner anointing in this place. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm gonna cut it. Turn to your neighbor and say, honor is different from follow. See, I only follow Christ. I follow Christ in people. And Christ in the scriptures. But me, I follow Christ. What is Christ? Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is not Jesus' name. The word Christ is from the word Christos. It means the anointed and his anointing. So it says, me, I follow the manifestation of the anointing. <laughs> follow me as I follow the anointing. Follow me, Jesus, as I follow the anointing.